Hi. In this video I will show a method for doing manual retopology entirely in Nomad Sculpt. This method will work on both Android and iOS devices. Here is a head retopology I did in 38 minutes in Nomad. It has 2100 vertices and has a baked normal map. Let's look at it without the normal map or smooth shading. Here I have highlighted the most important edge loops. There are different patterns of edge loops that people use to retopologize the head, but I chose to copy a fairly typical one. Almost any pattern can be made in Nomad using the technique I will show. Here is a more complex retopology of a skull I also did. This shows it is possible to create bridging structures with openings in your mesh, as you see here in the cheekbone region. In order to do retopology like this, we only need to know a few techniques. I will talk you through them in detail first, then I will show an overview of how to do the head retopology. The first technique we need to know, is how to create edge flow where we need it on a mesh. The way to do this is not obvious so follow the steps closely. First go to the debug menu, and at the very bottom click the checkbox join merge radius. Move the slider to the right until it shows a very small positive value. Doing this allows us to fuse separate meshes together properly. Now create a mask. The perimeter of the mask will become a continuous flow of edges. Go to the mask settings and set the height to a positive value. Extract a shell. We now need to delete the touching faces on both the extraction and the original mesh. I believe the quickest way to do this is to follow these steps exactly. Immediately after making the extraction go to solo view mode. Now click hide. Activate face groups if necessary. Tap on the faces that were touching the original mesh. Click delete. Now go immediately to the scene menu and tap on the name of the original mesh. Go to the select tool and reset the height to zero. With the split function set to none and none, click split. Go straight to the scene menu and click delete. Still in the scene menu, tick the checkbox for the extracted shell. Both the original mesh and the extracted shell should now be selected. Click join. The two meshes have become fused as one. Now with the smooth brush flatten the extrusion back down and notice how we have created a flow of faces where the perimeter of the mask was. If we need more edge loops along this flow of faces, simply increase the edge loop number when we do the original extraction and we will get a result like this. Practice this procedure until you can do it quickly. We will only need to do it 7 times to re-apologize the head anyway, so it's nothing to worry about. An important point to remember is that when you have finished doing the re-apology you must uncheck the join merge radius box. Also untick it before doing any subdivision during the re-apology process. If you forget to untick it, crazy things will happen to normal high poly meshes. So please, please don't open one of your favorite models and start working on it until you have definitely unchecked the box. You might spoil your model so always double check that the box has been unchecked. If you are going to re-apologize something, I also recommend that you create a clone of the original and open it in a new scene and re-apologize it there. That way just in case something goes wrong, your original is safe. Let's look at one more technique before doing the head re-apology. This one is very quick and easy. We can use the split tool to cut additional edge loops into the mesh. After cutting the loop, select the original mesh and the piece we have just split off, and join them. The join merge radius checkbox needs to be ticked for the pieces to fuse properly together. You can cut many loops one after another and then join them all at the same time like this. That was a lot of information to take in at once. Don't worry if it hasn't sunken yet. Watch the overview of the head retopology and then rewatch this section if you decide to try some retopology yourself. We are now ready to retopologize the head. First go to the material settings for the high poly head and turn off the wireframe. However make sure that wireframe is active at the bottom of the screen. Now add a box. Change its material setting to additive so we can see through it. Adjust its size to match the head. Adjust the divisions to a similar density as you see on screen. Now tilt the box slightly so the lower edges approximately match the direction of the jawline. Now using a combination of the smooth brush and clay brush, roughly match the shape of the box to the head. Now go to the reproject settings and copy exactly what you see on screen. Click reproject to wrap the box onto the high poly head. 
Now adjust the box material to opaque and the high poly head to blending. Set the opacity of the high poly head to just slightly less than 100%. This will let us see our retopology mesh even if it is slightly below the surface of the high poly head. Click Reproject again. Use the Move tool to adjust the lower edges to match the jawline. Now let's create our first edge flow running along the jawline and up past the ear and over the top of the head. Mask the faces as shown then follow the extrude faces procedure. We will add one extra loop when we extract. The touching faces are deleted and the extracted shell is then joined to the mesh. We smooth it out afterwards. Reproject again and even out the vertices with the move tool and smooth brush. We repeat this procedure many times as we retopologize. At first it might look a bit chaotic, but very soon the retopology mesh starts to take shape. Now let's create edge flow around the eyes, across the bridge of the nose and across the forehead. Mask is shown and follow the extrusion procedure. Smooth out the extrusion and reproject. Now we create flow around the eyes using the same procedure. Start to match the edges to the details of the high poly form using the move tool. It may be helpful to change the retopology mesh material to additive from time to time to help us see the high poly form underneath. Continue to move, smooth, reproject and repeat. Each time our retopology mesh gets closer and closer in shape to the high poly head. I think you've got the idea now, so I'll cover creating the remaining edge flow more quickly. Mask here to create flow over the bridge of the nose and around under the mouth. Extrude, smooth then reproject. At this point I decide we need an extra edge loop, so I use the split tool to create one, then I join the two pieces back together. Now create edge loops around the mouth. The mouth needs a lot of definition so I add six edge loops when doing the extraction. Once again smooth then reproject. Every now and again you need to go to the face group tool and click remove unused face groups. I like to turn the whole mesh into a single face group when I do this. This is because unused face groups build up in number as we proceed until eventually your device will grind to a halt. Create flow around the underside of the nose. I decide we need more topology along the center so I use the split tool to cut a new edge just to the right of the central line. I then use the split and mirror function to mirror the mesh from right to left. I smooth out the new edges slightly. Now do the nostrils. Each time the process is the same. Mask, extrude, smooth, reproject, and move the vertices into position when necessary. Little by little we create a mesh that matches the high poly version quite closely. Now I tidy up the bottom of the neck by deleting unneeded faces. Then I drag out the final line of edges, then use the split tool to create clean new faces. I smooth them and move them into position then reproject. Repeat as necessary. Lastly I create edge flow around the ear and move the vertices into position, reprojecting as I go. We are finished. I UV unwrap the model using this face group pattern, then I bake a normal map from the high poly original. Let's compare them side by side. The high poly is on the left. 
My read apologized mesh on the right has 2700 vertices, although this could have been lower if I'd started with a box that had fewer divisions. Including extra time for the screen recording, this read apology took about an hour. However, the head mesh I showed you at the start took only 38 minutes. I did it after recording this tutorial, so I had more practice and experience. I think that is a very reasonable time for such a read apology, especially as Nomad is a sculpting app with no purpose made manual read apology tools. Of course, professionals will have access to better, faster alternatives, but for many Nomad users, Nomad is their first experience of 3D and they don't have access to other tools. Android users in particular, do not have many choices. The Quadrimesher in app purchase is not available to them, neither are alternative apps like Cozy Blanket or Uniform, which have excellent read apology features, but are only on iOS. So I think this is a very interesting and viable option for those who are interested in trying read apology. Believe it or not, Nomad can actually do even more than what I have shown so far. I am working on refining this technique further, and speeding it up. If this video is of interest to people I will make a follow-up showing extra techniques, including how to make structures such as the opening you see on this skull read apology. I also plan to read apologize a whole character from head to toe to show it is possible, so please subscribe to see more on this topic and to get other, hopefully original nomad tips and tutorials. See you next time.